Hey guys, this is Ryan Garcia and you're watching Three Point Conversion. Let's go. Kyrie, we talked to Luca earlier about uh, your performance in the fourth quarter. He said you were born for these moments, called you Mr. Fourth Quarter. <laughs> so for one, I guess what does it mean to hear your teammate talk about you like that? And in, in the fourth quarter, is it just something as simple as does a does a switch flip off to you? Like why are you so comfortable in these moments? I appreciate his words. <laughs> Luca's funny, man. Uh, I feel like we're both born for this, if you if you ask me. But um, yeah, it's just basketball, man. It's uh, you know you got to give the game what it needs at times and. Uh, I felt like in that fourth quarter, we uh, had a good run going and those guys were, uh, you know, pressuring the basketball up the floor. So when we got into the paint, I felt like we just had to convert, get a few stops. We were playing um, back and forth game for a little bit with them. Um, but I had confidence in our guys when uh, we got stops in that fourth quarter and we got on transition. We just had to continue to push and get some easy ones. And then um, down the stretch, that's that's where we make our money, man. Um, you know, since All-Star break, we've uh, been up there with some of the top teams in the league. Uh, we're finishing clutch games. We have a great clutch record. Uh, so I, I think we have that poise now. And, um, you know, we're showcasing just our skill sets out there that uh, a lot of teams have to guard. The depth that we have, a lot of teams have to guard um, each one of us. And you got to pick your poison. So in the fourth quarter, when I'm being aggressive, I know it opens opportunities not only for myself but for my teammates. Harry, you're known for being a historian of the game right here. Um, Thank you. Just with I'm one of few. <laughs> I'm one of the few that are actually a historian of the game in my age. Yeah, go ahead. With, with teams being 154-0, and 0, undefeated, when they go up 3-0, just what's the significance of that stat? And how does that feel, just being 3-0 in this position right now? It means absolutely nothing right now. Uh, you know, that's not even something I'm thinking about. Um, you know, going into game four, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, and that's the type of motivation and mentality we have in that locker room. It's not just me. Uh, we feel like the job isn't finished. And... We're going against one of the greatest teams in the world. You know, they still have the capability of, of beating us on any given night, and we have to treat them like that. So, you know, it's a time to celebrate after the game, but once I get up here, it's on to the next thing and thinking about my recovery work, putting my kids to bed, watching film, and uh, just getting ready for this war, man, uh, war-like uh, battle that's going to come uh, next game. You know, so got to appreciate where we are, but at the same time, don't take it for granted and don't take the other team for granted because they're pretty sure they're going to watch this interview. They're going to study all our habits and see if we, uh, you know, lay down a little bit and get comfortable. I don't want to get comfortable at all. I want to push forward even more so and have our best game, game four, um, and live with the results after that. Katie, in the fourth quarter, you don't, don't show any emotion. You stay focused on it all the time. And how do you manage to stay in the song for so long? Yeah. No, thanks for thanks for talking. <laughs> thanks for speaking. I know you're giving your best. Um, yeah, no, the fourth quarter is, uh, you know, it's just you get to, a chance to see your competitors' emotions. You get to see what they're made of. Uh, you get to see the plays that they run in the clutch. And uh, it's just a chess match. So uh, I think that's the, that's the approach I take uh, throughout most of the game, but especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, when the game is in the balance, they're taking the lead, we're taking the lead. There's a few foul calls that are called that slows the game down. Uh, but you just got to pay attention to all the little things. And, uh, you know, I feel like you put yourself in a, a great position. And uh, also when we come into our huddles, whether we're on the floor or whether in timeouts, we are constantly communicating and we're constantly giving each other that reassurance and confidence that, you know, we're a good team too and we got to finish the job. Kai, you mentioned Luke is also born for those clutch situations. What... what do you see that makes him uniquely suited to be a closer, uh, you know, especially at this stage? Uh, I mean, I think he's shown it over and over. Um, whether he's made him or missed him, he's taken him. And that's the confidence you need uh, to have, uh, especially in that clutch, in those clutch situations. You've got to have that confidence. And you can't be thinking about anything else other than your mechanics and your fundamentals and, um, you know, putting us up ahead uh, to give us that separation, to give us that peace of mind. Uh, so... You know, when he's getting it going and he's making threes or he's driving to the basket, he's getting to the free throw line and it creates opportunities for all of us. And uh, when he gets it out in transition, he starts going and we see Luca get up down and get into his Luca sprint. That makes a big deal for us and uh, it makes a big difference for us and uh, makes my job a lot easier, especially when I'm coming to transition and those guys are a little tired. So, um, again, we don't play your turn, my turn, but when we get those opportunities to push in transition, or get Luca ISO on the wing or at the top of the key, it's, it's our time to take advantage of it. 
Kyrie over here. Um, Y'all have gone up against, you know, two of the top three seeds in this playoffs. Um, you guys look like you're the favorite, though, like the way you're playing, just so much confidence. What goes into that mentality? What, what exactly are you? Just a confident mentality despite being an underdog in a lot of the series that you've played. Uh, I mean, if, if you look at our, our regular season, I don't think it tells the whole truth of who we are, you know, and, or who we were. I, I felt like, um, you know, the second half of the season, everybody got to you know, kind of see what we were made of. Uh, you know, but if you look at the beginning of the season, I mean, we were on pace for having a great season still. Um, you know, I think we would have finished one through three. That's playing hypotheticals, you know, if I don't get injured um, or if Luke is not laboring a little bit or if we don't go through kind of those big transitions uh, that we had in the season where we had lineup changes. Um, you know, so I, I take all that into account when I look at who we are now. Uh, we've grown over the past few months. Uh, this has been a journey for us. And, um, you know, I like to think that, you know, being in fifth, uh, Took some pressure off of us uh, coming into this postseason. You know, everybody was looking at the top three seeds. So I felt like we, we snuck in there a little bit and surprised a few teams. But uh, the guys in the locker room all have always had that utmost confidence in one another. And uh, when we started getting into some tough games and we were able to uh, battle it out and come out with some wins, I think that uh, really sparked a, a new confidence for us. You know, guys making tough shots towards the end. I mean, I, I think you guys remember that Cleveland game, right? We, uh, <laughs> you know, now it's in Cleveland history. It had to be against me, but I, I look at my teammates and I'm telling them, I'm like, I was so pissed we lost there. And, um, but I want them to remember that, you know, what that felt like where we took our, our foot off the gas pedal a little bit and then Max Cruz hits a 59 footer, you know, breaks our heart and we go and lose in Indiana. So some of those moments I think that could have broken our team really made us who we are. And I'm grateful for these guys just continuing to battle and our coaching staff getting us prepared and upper management doing a great job just feeding us confidence. So it's a full team effort. Hi, Ree. Um, hi. You've been in the game quite a while. You've been around great players, uh, great teams. And just at this point in your career, yeah. are you, your kids? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm, are they good? Yeah, they're good. Okay. Uh, at this point in your career and just honestly in your life, what do the Dallas Mavericks mean to you from the coaching staff to the guys that you get to call teammates? Uh, I feel like it's a, a great chapter that's being written right now. Um, you know, I'm enjoying every step of the way. I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm enjoying the hot weather right now. I'm enjoying the Dallas community and the fans here. And, um, you know, we talked about this early in the season, just how much I felt embraced. Uh, but I think it's going a little deeper than that. It's, it's really helped me grow as a human being and find my peace out here. It's good to breathe fresh air, get outside. <laughs> you know, it's, seasonal depression is real when you're growing up in up north. I spent 12 years in the Eastern Conference you know, in three cold cities that deal with four seasons. So you come out here and you're able to get outside and ground yourself a little bit more and spend some time with your family, watch your kids run outside and wife's happy. You know, you know what they say about a happy wife? Happy life, you know? So I, I don't take those things for granted. Um, you know, it, it comes with it and we're laughing about it, but on a serious note, uh, I've just been able to grow and uh, understand that uh, all these things don't um, happen without a lot of the work that goes unseen you know, just doing the inner work, doing the spiritual work and enjoying the game and putting that in perspective as well. You know, feels good. Kyrie, over here to your right, thank you for your time this evening. We've talked to, to you about the, being a leader on this team, right? A multitude of times, so it's not a new conversation. I love it, I love it. <laughs> well, how do you navigate the complexities of being a leader? Because we know it doesn't always look the same way every day. How do you navigate knowing when to push, when to pull and everything in between? I mean, that, I mean, we throw around that word leader and leadership so often, especially in this uh, industry. Uh, you know, I, I genuinely feel like, uh, you know, leaders are chosen sometimes, but uh, leaders emerge out of the group, too. And, um, you know, when you get that uh, role or people start calling you a great leader or start asking you about leadership, you got to understand that when you're in that position, the failure is going to be part of it. Um, making mistakes is going to be part of it. And... Um, you know, almost like embarrassment is part of it too, because sometimes you're going to get it right and sometimes you're going to get it completely wrong. So uh, I think I've come to a, a place in my life where I've just accepted it. You know, this is what comes with it. Um, you know, the, the thing that I always think about uh, when I am leading the guys with some of the other leaders on the team is just uh, protecting them and uh, allowing them to fail too and uh, feel what pain feels like too. You know, so I think all these words that we're throwing out are just words, but when you're in the middle of it um, and you got to figure it out 
and you don't have it all figured out, that's when you're, that's when you're made, you know, right there. So it feels good that I have uh, the support system, though. That I'm not doing this alone. It's never a lonely job. I used to think leadership was just about me, 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 and taking on the, the brunt of all the responsibility. No, that's not even close to it. You know, you got good people around, good family, good friends, and they love you un unconditionally. Anything's possible in this world. Harry. Harry, it feels like uh, since, since, especially since the, since the trade deadline, that you guys keep finding new ways to win. You know, you learn to win with defense. You learn to win with when players are out. The first two games of the series, mm -hmm. you know, you learn to win even when you weren't hitting threes. You know, tonight you guys lost, you know, didn't have Derek Lively for, for a lot of the game. Uh, you know, Jason Kidd said it was, was going to be about shot making down the stretch. Is, is there a through line that, you know, runs through all of this, you know, ability to keep finding different ways to win, even if it looks very different than the a through line. What do you mean? A through line or a theme? Like what? what oh, okay, what's the yeah, cause? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this in this roster. And uh, this team. You got, you got some. Yeah, I mean, you got some. Uh, as we say, we got some bad MFers in that locker room, man. We we got some uh, guys that don't care about doing the dirty work and uh, doing the little things for us to win and have always preached selflessness in our locker room. Uh, and this was before I even got here. So when I got here, the culture was still being uh, you know, birthed a little bit. And um, you know, you look at their success before I got here, Western Conference Finals, and then me and Luca get together. And you know, we're trying to figure out our tandem. And then we come into the season, um, I think a lot of us took that as motivation and uh, wanted to be in the best shape possible. And I think that's what's allowing us to be in the situation or the circumstance we're in now. We're in great shape. We're conditioned mentally and emotionally. And, uh, you know, we've worked on our strategy since the All-Star break. And I think that's helped. Uh, we've built trust. And uh, every day that we go into practice, we actually hoop against each other. We play. Um, not a lot of teams still practice hard, <laughs> you know. So I think we're very old school in our mentality. And we're led by Jason Kidd. He reminds us that. You know, these the older eras that came before you, man, just go study them, go go watch them, go study some of the greatest to play, and not the greatest to ever score, but the greatest to play games. You know, the Robert Ories, the Scottie Pippins of the world. Go study some of the guys that don't get recognized as the main guy. You know what I mean? And once you play that uh, role and you get used to it, I think winning becomes the most important thing. So we just want to be remembered as a great team and not just great performers and individual accolades. You know, that'll come. Um, but we just want to be remembered as a great team that put defense first. Harry, I was asking Jason about kind of what makes you and Luca work so well. And one of the things he said was your willingness to be kind of a second, to be a 1B uh, on this team. Is that a role that you feel like you've always been? He, he said a 1B. A 1B. Okay. <laughs> well, is that a role you've, you've always been you know, comfortable accepting? Or is experience, age, all you've gone through made fitting into this role a little bit easier? To be honest with you, I, I don't care. Uh, at this point in my life, being a 1A or 1B or being seen as a second option, I, I leave that for um, you know the words that everybody throws around. I, I just look at it as just winning basketball, doing the little things, what it takes, man. And um, you know, ever since I was young, I've always felt like I'm one of the best in the world because I'm able to play with other great players. I don't ask for the ball, I don't demand it. I will play defense. I will do all the other things that don't show up in the stat sheet. And that's always what I've wanted to be remembered as. Um, everything else that people have thrown on my career has been up to them and what they've seen. And I have to take that. You know, I have to take that fair criticism. But how I feel as a person when I go out there is a confident MF -er that will play with the best of the world. I don't care who's out there. It could be Will, MJ, Steph, Bron, you know, whatever team. And I feel like, you know, if I get a few of my friends from around the way, I, you know, Hey, we might not have a chance that day, but <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, just enjoying the game and the competition is what comes with it. So that's really what I'm getting at. It's just enjoying the competition and enjoying, uh, you know, the failures and the success that come in, into. Right here, Kyrie. Uh, last, last question one. or Thank another you. question. I appreciate it. I put my so, oh, my bad. I apologize about that. So, of course, you're a student at the game when it comes to history. How do you just take in, you know, the accolades when people talk about you and Luca as possibly the greatest backcourt in NBA history? Thank you. Who said that? It's a lot of talk about that. It's a lot of talk that you and Luca are uh, possibly the you know greatest backcourt in NBA history. I mean, it doesn't mean anything if we don't win a ring together, you know. And I and I, I say that um, very responsibly too, you know. Not saying that we aren't great now, um, but there are other backcourts that are more deserving right now for that recognition. And um, 
I think once we put a good run together and we can look back on it and reflect on it, then that'll be our time. But right now, I want to show a lot of respect to the guys that have come before us and have actually did it. Um, and our time will come. You know, we just got to keep putting in the work and continue to feed each other that positive affirmation energy, and we'll go from there, man. But right now, we're just focused on enjoying the moment, enjoying how well we're playing um, as a team. And, you know, you're seeing some special basketball from me and Luca, but we wouldn't be here without our teammates. So um, full-on team success, man. You guys get home safe. And